Hey guys, it's May May and it's time to fill, film our 2020 desk calendar turned mini album. If you've not seen this guy, which by the way, it's not complete. I'll be finishing the front on our live show on Thursday. If you've not seen this guy, it is my desk calendar that I turn in to a mini album. And what I'm going to do rather than flipping through the whole thing today is link all the videos related to it for you guys in the description below so we can get started. All right. The first thing you have to do is make your calendars. And I'm going to be using the stamp set that we have called the Large Never Ending Calendar. So it looks like this, and this is the large version. And you're able to make the calendars for every year, every month, whatever, regardless of um, having a separate stamp for each month. This guy does the work for you. It's a perpetual calendar. Okay, so here's how I do it. And I want to show you uh, a little tip that I have for you too while we're at it. So the first thing I do is I take the um, bar stamp, I've got ink everywhere, guys. I've done 11 months already, so we're fixing to do the 12th together. But you take the bar stamp that has the days of the week on it. You want to stamp that first. All the dimensions, all of um, the cuts and things you'll need to make are going to be on the blog post that I link in the description. So you'll be able to get to all of that. So like this page, all the measurements will be there for you on the blog post. So I ink up the bar stamp. Now I have it on a um, block sideways because I didn't have one clean that I could use that was bigger. All of my stamp blocks have stamps on them. I need to clean my room. Okay, so this is what you do first. You stamp the days of the week first, all right? And now here's my first tip for you. If you have the um, cut lines from My Sweet Petunia, these things are great for this. I use it as my never-ending calendar stamp block. It is perfect. See how it fits perfect on there? I love it. So here's what you do. Tip number two. <laughs> I went to Google, okay, and I searched a 2020 calendar, and I sat it on my iPad where I was looking at it while I was working so I could keep myself on target, all right? So that's how I'm finding what the month should look like. So December of 2020 starts on Tuesday, and ends on the 31st. That's the two things I need to know. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some white paper under here so you can see what I'm doing. Now, I have videos showing you how to use this stamp. So, I mean, this is not, not the only course you get. If you'll just look, look up Never Ending Stamp Set, we have two of them. We have a small one and a large one, and I have videos showing you how to use it. All right, so the first is on a Tuesday here. So I need to go from the 1st to the 5th. And it's 31 days, so I need all 31 days. So I'm going to ink from the 1st to the 5th to start with. So just take my ink block, and it's real easy to do. Do you see how I can see the numbers start to appear? And I'll make sure I get these bottom ones. And because it ends on the 5th, I need to ink to the 6th down here. And that way I know I have my whole month. And the um, numbers are far enough apart, you don't have to tape them or anything. If you only need the 30th, or the 29th for February, or even when it's 28, you can just tape these off. That's what I normally do, just put a little piece of washi down there. So that's how I ink up my um, calendar. And then, because we know that December 1st starts on a Tuesday, I just take this number one and put it under Tuesday, and I just kind of eyeball the rest and stamp it down. And that's how you use the never ending calendar. Now that's a crash course, like I said, but I have lots of videos to show you how to do it, but that's how you get it. And that way you have one calendar set that lasts you forever. And I'll have all that linked in the blog post for you, okay? So this is December. Now I went ahead and stamped all my months. So I have January through December right here. And now what I'm gonna do is make my tabs at the bottom so I can put the um, words on here. To make my tabs, I'm using my works tool, and here's how I'm doing it. I'm just taking my calendar, and first I'm placing it face up in the tab punch corner and punching. That gets me my first little rounded corner, okay? Then I'm going to flip this guy over and line it up with the little template mark where it says large and punch there. And so this is what I get. Now I'll come back with the trimmer and cut that away in just a minute, but that way all my calendars will have a little tab for putting in the month. Now what I'm going to do is just line this guy up in my works tool. And from the side, I can see the blade and I can see where it needs to go. So I'm just going to place that blade right into that little notch and pull toward me. And now you can see that it cuts that little piece off and leaves me that little area down there for the month to go. You don't have to do this part. You can just stamp the month down there. But I kind of like the way it looked. I did this last year and I thought it was kind of cute. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through, and I'm going to use the block letters. You get two different fonts of the um, month words on your stamp set, but I'm going to use the 
the block letters. I just think they look pretty. And I think last year I used the, um, the typewriter, so I thought I'd do it different this year. So I'm just gonna run through and label each sheet. So now to assemble our actual calendar body. You're gonna need two pieces of chipboard. This is six by six. And then this piece is three and a half by six. So I have done something that you guys asked me to do last time. You said that once you filled your calendar up, you felt like it was a little too narrow here to hold the weight. Mine doesn't seem to have a problem. And a lot of people were saying the problem was during the year when they would flip the calendar pages over and get back heavy. This guy's only three inches wide. And I did that to save chipboard because if you're using six by six pieces, you could get two bases out of one piece. But this year I've just extended it out half an inch to see if that'll help us. So this one's half an inch longer than last time. Here's how you assemble. We don't need this top piece right now. We need this base and this piece here, which we're going to put together using a classic binding strip, one inch by six inches that I'm gonna score in half. So I'll put this into my scoreboard and I'm gonna score it in half at half an inch, just like that. Fold this in half. And this year, I'm just gonna use art glitter glue. I don't think I have to use sticky tape for this. I can just, it's one strip and I think it'll be just fine. So I'm just going to add some glue here. I'll do one side and then the other so I can get one glued down good before I start on the other. And you just wanna line this up where the score mark is kind of hanging off the edge and will live in the gap between the two pieces. So if that makes sense, I wanna be able to see my score mark. I can't because of my fuzzy chipboard. My chipboard blade has hit it. I need to replace it. Um, but that's where the score mark will live like so. We can even flip this over so you can see me put the other one on. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply glue to this side. The reason we want the score mark free is because you want it to be able to fold easy. So if you cover your score mark, you'll struggle getting a good, um, easy fold. Now I'll just place this guy down, giving myself that little bit of a gap. Now in my calendar last year, I did not put another piece on the front. I just left it as it is. And that's what I'm gonna do here as well. Now the next thing we need to score is this little guy. This is gonna be the flap that opens and closes our book um, that will have the magnet on it. I, this is a um, three inch by two inch piece with the three inch side in your score trim or in your scoreboard, I'm gonna score it at two inches. And that's gonna be what holds my book together. So this guy, I'm gonna go ahead and glue him here. Ooh, I left a big old pile of glue. So this guy's gonna be glued on to the middle here. It's a little bigger flap than I did last year. Not on purpose, I just did that. I, I guess I measured wrong. So if you wanna make your flap a little smaller, you can. I think I'm gonna corner round mine this year. I didn't corner round last year's and I kinda of thought, hmm, this would've looked better if I did. So I'm just gonna, the flap that's gonna be on the book itself, I'm just gonna corner round so it looks more like that. I just think that'll look better. So I just need to glue down this flap to this piece. And you wanna do this before you start to put your pretty papers on. Now I'm gonna use my cutting mat to help me here. I got one, two. So I wanna line up at this um, mark. This is two inches up from the bottom and that'll leave me two inches on that side as well. So that way I know I get this flap centered. And again, it's good to let that score mark hang off the page so we'll get a good fold. Now I've already cut my pieces to go on top of here and I'm doing this different than last year too. Let me show you what I'm doing. So I have a paper pack that I love and I'm just, again, how I did my cover last year was very neutral. Remember I did green and the stripes so I can make my cover very neutral. Well, I'm gonna do the same this year, but this year I'm gonna use black and white polka dot for my cover, my outside cover. And on the inside, I'm either gonna use this floral or the stripe. I can't decide yet. I think it's gonna be the floral. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue down my um, polka dots. So this is gonna be the front. Remember, you'll come back and do your cover. I decided last year to come back and do my cover in January. So this month, I haven't done the cover yet. My cover, I'm gonna do it on Thursday on my live show. But I like the idea of doing the cover afterwards. So if there's one particular picture you wanna focus on from out the year, or maybe you didn't have room in your book to do all of your highlights, maybe you wanna add something else to the cover, or you just never know how your book will end up. So I'm gonna do my cover last. So there's one piece. Now this piece is gonna go over and it's gonna just clean up our little flap and just make that look better. I'm just gonna clean this guy up here. Now, it's important that you only do this part 
on the piece that has the flap and the inside of it for now. We've got to put a um, magnet on the other side, so you don't want to mess with that one just yet. You're just doing this one that has the flap on the bottom. I think I'm going to put the floral on the inside. I just think it'll be pretty in there. It is not like me to choose florals over stripes, but lately, hmm, it's been a thing. <laughs> I told Vance yesterday, I said, I am really finding that I am liking different things nowadays. Pretty cool. They've always said as you get older, your taste changes. All right, I need a piece for here. So on this one, I decided to put the stripe up. I think that'll be pretty to have the floral and the stripe and the polka dots. And that'll be neat and clean. Now, while I've got this piece here, I'm going to mark for my holes at the top here. And I'm doing this just like last year. My top hole is going to come in an inch and a half. So I'm just going to measure in an inch and a half and mark it with a pencil. I made a pretty obnoxious mark because of that floral. I kind of lose it in that pattern. So I'm going to do the same thing here, an inch and a half in. And then I went ahead and set my crocodile to half an inch deep on my, oh, did I do the wrong hole? No, it's this one, to half an inch deep on the larger hole. So all I need to do now is line that pencil mark up with my crocodile and press my crocodile all the way to my stopper there. And that is where my first hole will live. And I'm gonna do the second one on this side. Same thing, lining up that hole in the center of my crocodile, pressing it all the way to my stopper and poking that hole. So that's where my other holes need to live as well. I'll poke them in a few minutes. All right, so what we need to do now is get our other side ready with its magnet. So for this album, you'll need two magnets. And I'm using the basic gray that are the larger magnets. You get a plus and a minus. Now I made a mistake and went ahead and did this without walking you through it, but I'm gonna show you how it works. The back of these magnets all have an adhesive on them, okay? So what I like to do is just take my pokey tool and lift that protector piece up and that reveals the adhesive. You can see it there. Then I stick my minus, it doesn't matter which one, but in my head I use the minus. I stick the minus onto my flap right here, okay? Not in the middle, not up here, not too low down, just right in this area. Then to line this guy up, here's what you'll do. You'll take your plus size magnet, plus side magnet, and you'll stick it down here. Then you'll peel the backer off Okay, revealing the adhesive. You're gonna stand these two sides up. I'm gonna do this on the back side, so since I already have a magnet there. You're gonna stand these guys up like so, just like they'll be when you have your rings in it. And with the adhesive showing, you're gonna lift this up and let that magnet go where it goes, okay? Then you'll just press that magnet down where it is. That's where mine ended up. So let me show you how this works. I'm sorry, I did not do that correctly, so I had to walk you through it, but there you go. All right, so I'm gonna stand this guy up and then lift this guy up and you can see now how it closes. Now, the way it works for whenever we're opening as our calendar, this guy flips to the back, okay? This guy flips to the back, I'll show you like this, and then your flap will go right to the inside. So it's, it's exactly where it needs to be on the front and the back, just like that, okay? If that confuses you, because I did mess up my filming of it, so if I messed it up too much, just head to the video I have linked below from where I made last year's and I'll walk you through it a little better. Now we can cover this. Oh, and we can cover this little piece. So I'm going to corner around the ends of this so they'll match. See that little guy there? Corner around this one as well. So that'll be on two sides. And then I have two pieces of paper for this guy. Now you don't have to hide your magnets. I think the magnets are fine to show. But if you want to, you can just put them right underneath like I'm doing here and you can hide it away and no one will ever see it. We're gonna hide both of them so the magnets will be completely gone. But again, that's not necessary because the magnets are pretty. So if you just wanna stick them on there, just go ahead and do your covering first and then stick it down. Now I'm just gonna use my previous holes that I punched to line up for my new holes. Do you see that there? So I can see where these go. I'm just gonna line this up so then I know that my holes are all in the same spot. So that is the outside of our calendar all made. We just need to put our rings on. I'm using the inch and a half rings. I used the same ones last year and I didn't have an issue with it, but they do make larger rings. If you need the larger ones, we have those too. So if you think you might wanna use those, grab those. But these worked perfectly fine for me last year. Ooh, these are stiff. Get them opened up. All right, and then I'm just gonna run one book ring through the front to the back and I can close that one. These are super tight. That's good, because you're gonna open and close it at least 12 times throughout the year if you do it like I do mine. 
and close that one. And then this guy will come up just like that. So there's the basics, okay? Now we need to put our filler inside. Now you're gonna need 12 pieces that are, let me get my measurement for you. I forget, I've written them all down for the blog post, but I've totally forgotten. Five and a half by five and a half. And then you're gonna need 12 pieces that are five and a quarter by five and a quarter to go on top of that, okay? So these are gonna represent each of your months. And I'm gonna run through and glue these down as I talk to you about this, because I wanna tell you something. So last year I used white paper here, and that was fine. I just decided this year I wanted to use the um, craft color. The other thing I did last year in my calendar was these pages, I went through and carefully curated each month to have a page that went with that particular month. So this piece I'm gluing down right now looked like January, my February looked like February, etc. And that's perfectly fine. If I were given this as a gift, that's exactly what I would do again so that the calendar made sense to the gift recipient. For me, I found last year, I spent a lot of time um, covering up the background I had chosen because the picture I used as my highlight reel wasn't really, um, didn't really match the background that I had placed down. So since I know this will become a mini album and there's a real good chance that I'm gonna cover this up anyway, I went through and found some scrap pages that I had. Like these are some older six by six pads. This is one from the spring. I love the pattern. I totally love that pattern. So you know that one's going down. So I just went through some of my six by six and did that. I also used um, a paper pack that I used part of the other day and had some pages left. So I'm just using up some paper that would normally just go into my stash until I was ready to use it. So my calendar will still be pretty on my desk. It may not be specific to a, you know, it may not be barbecue in, in July, or it may not be fireworks in July on the background paper, but I don't think that'll bother me because by the time it's done, you're not even gonna know. And I spent a lot of time curating those pages, picking out all the pages, and I thought I covered most of it up. Again, though, if I were given this as a gift, I would 100% curate each page for the month. January would be a winter scene, February would be a Valentine scene, March would be green or St. Patrick's, um, April would be Easter. I would do that if I were given it as a gift because that, that way, sitting on the person's desk, it would make sense. This one is just for me. So I have all of my pages covered on one side. The back side is for journaling. And I'm gonna tell you something, this year, I am journaling as I go. I have about nine months I need to go back and journal in my old book, in my old calendar, but I'm going to do it. I have a goal to get it done. <laughs> So I will be uh, journaling as I go this time. All right, now what we need to do is we need to poke the holes in our pages. And I think I'm gonna cheat a little bit by just using this to help me out. Because all I need to do is get my basic mark. So I'm gonna take one of my pages here and I'm gonna line it up to the top, um, to the top edge of the decorator paper. Can you see how that goes? It leaves a little matte finish or the little matte edge, but I'm right at the top of the decorator paper. So I'm just going to line that page up and eyeball center it. Then I'm going to use my pokey, uh, my pokey tool and I'm going to use my hole punch to punch my holes right there. So now I can use this one to punch all the other holes and I can do more than one at a time this way. Okay, so we'll move this to the side. Now it is time to put our calendar on. So I got all my calendars and at the end, I will do a walkthrough of my other calendar to show you how this looks at the end of the year so it all makes sense. All I'm gonna do here is run through, I do not care about the backgrounds, I don't care which one it is, I'm gonna run through and glue these guys down. This is where last year, when I did my calendar, I used it for placing my picture. So I just put this guy centered here on the top. Look how pretty that is just as a calendar, right? I mean, you, like I said, if you're gonna give this as a gift, be specific about your background. I'm not too worried about it. So flip that guy over and keep going. Now we can assemble our calendar back together here. So I put my rings in like so. And I got all my months all set out here. I probably need to put them in one or two at a time. So you just place the rings in these. I love the floral. Am I getting into florals? I think so. I have to tell you, this has literally been my favorite project of last year. I mean, of all of last year, this is my favorite project. It just was so fun to do every month. It's fun to do live with you guys on our live shows. It's just, and it's so cool at the end of the year to basically have a highlight reel of my year. So now there is 2020's calendar and the way it works, I'll show you. You'll open the little flap here, okay? You're gonna flip this guy around to the back 
and then you're gonna flip the base to the back and let it magnet together back here and that will stand. Now I will tell you, for the first few months, these guys are a little wiggly, a little floppy, but once you start adding pages, it thickens up and everything starts to stand like it should. So this way you can see your January calendar and then you'll just fill it up. Let's go through my 2019 calendar so you can see what it actually turns out like. So you can see here my 2019 calendar is pretty full, right? And you see how these have start, uh, started to stand up and they've gotten sturdy. So same thing, you flip your flap here, flip this piece to the back, all right? Turn this under and let it magnet to your other piece and that is what will stand it up. And this is what mine looks like. So in January, we had a basketball tournament. In February, we had our cruise with May May. We went on a cruise. In March, we brought back Mr. Big Ear stamp set. That was super fun. In April, my grandbaby had her first birthday. In uh, May, two of my boys graduated. Jared graduated with his master's and Thomas graduated with his high school diploma. And then in, in June, my father had his picture made with Nick Saban, so he loved that. In July, this is my favorite thing that happened in all of July. This was Vinny's um, biscuit can explosion. It's absolutely the funniest thing ever, and I had to put that one there. This is Craft Acropolis that we did with all of you guys. I bet some of you are in this picture right here. And then this is where me and my chicks, we went to see Downton Abbey. So this is my favorite thing for that month. This is where we went to visit our granddaughter and our son and daughter-in-law. And this is a picture of us together at the pumpkin patch. And this is from our open house, our holiday open house. And these are some ladies making ornaments at the open house. And this is my family Christmas picture, which is my favorite picture of the year. I look forward to getting this one all the time. So we just did this one recently. Now I do have to go back and journal, which like I told you today, my goal for 2020 is to journal as I go so that when I'm done, the whole book is done. So it's my calendar throughout the year. It's my desk calendar. I'll show you. So throughout the year, it's my calendar. And then after that month is up, I decorate that page and that page is done. At the end of the year, it is a highlight reel mini album completed and done. And I can put this on my shelf and mark it as 2019 and know exactly uh, what my year was like. I love this project. I'm telling you, it's my favorite project. It might be the, my most favorite thing I've ever done. I love that it gives me a little bit of crafting to do every year, every month. And at the end of the year, I have a cool project to keep. And I cannot wait to get the cover done. I think it'll be cute. All right, guys, that is 2020. If you would like to see me do every single page of my new calendar, subscribe to my channel. Every Thursday, we have a live show. And one of those Thursdays out of the month, I do one of my pages. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and comment. Let me know what you think about this. Have you made one already? Are you going to make one? And if you have made one, please load it to our customer gallery at mememadeit.com. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.